if people still feel strong attachments to traditional sources of authority or fear and resentment of new patriot leaders and groups, then how do those loyalists, those Tories, how are loyalists impacted on a daily level? Most men in these communities have to leave, but that leaves behind the majority of loyalists simply as women and children. When women and children are left to manage estates on their own after men have to flee for political reasons, you still have to continue life and then face potential persecution or even prosecution. Free and enslaved blacks are also affected um, disproportionately with 10% of uh, their numbers being included in loyalist refugees overall. And whole indigenous communities that face attack or persecution have to uproot themselves and physically move from western or northern New York into British held Canada to escape whole American campaigns. Um, this is not necessarily a progressive move by the British because many of these groups, particularly the enslaved blacks, face the potential risk of freedom but then re-enslavement either in Canada or being returned as property by the end of the war to their patriot former masters after 1783. New Hampshire, for its part, formally abolishes slavery in 1783, but the practice continues according to the census, uh, even into the 1840s and 50s. As Thomas Day writes in 1776 from London, if there is an object truly ridiculous in nature, it is an American patriot signing resolutions of independency in one hand and holding the whip over his affrighted slaves in the other. What we have here is a uh, red-faced green coatee of several provincial loyalist corps that are raised in 1776 and 77 to participate in fighting alongside British soldiers. They're given for their role in the military ammunition pouches, like this cartridge box, which are worn in the waist to hold their ammunition. And this means that tens of thousands of men ultimately serve and die in dozens of American military units raised in British service. So Americans fighting against Americans. Americans fighting against Americans, even in battles like Oriskany, where there are no British soldiers present. In 1783, it means that tens of thousands of Americans have been forcibly ejected from their homes or made to leave. It means that many of their assets and real estate have been seized and sold, and they've effectively been sent into political exile. For instance, in my new town of Haverhill, New Hampshire, uh, Timothy Stevens, the local constable, was ordered to warn out 25 persons, men, women, and children, they being Tories, in February of 1784. There was the potential for some members and uh, single people to return to the colonies, to their former communities. However, as Abigail Adams and others says, there was a violent spirit against these refugees. You can hardly form any idea of it, quote. And legally reclaiming property would be tricky if it had been squatted on, bought, or sold by patriot neighbors in the years afterward. By 1783, Ultimately, about 80 to 100,000 Loyalist refugees had fled the U.S. permanently to Quebec, to Canadian maritime provinces, and smaller groups to the British West Indies, East Indies, and to the mainland UK, where they sought a redress of grievances, but also a new life. In contemporary terms, that would be the equivalent of 10 million people being ejected and finding futures elsewhere outside the U.S., and these would be fellow Americans just as they were in 1783. Now how does this link to Exeter's Independence Museum and to people today? When we celebrate July 4th as just a pageant, regardless of where it is in the U.S., we forget potentially that America's birth was violent, was tragic, was heroic, was flawed, was idealistic, was hypocritical, and ultimately it was human, it was complex. That can make us better citizens, that can make us stronger and more critically engaged in the 21st century, and it can make us better participants and more equal in America's ongoing and future story. We hope that this series on the motivation for Loyalist sympathies and how the American Revolution impacted those individuals has highlighted a different side of the War of Independence. This festival season, we ask you to question what independence means to you. Let us know in the comments. For more virtual content, please visit our website www.independencemuseum.org. This content is brought to you thanks to the New Hampshire State Council of the Arts. If you haven't yet gotten to the Independence Festival, you still have a chance to come on July 24th. We hope to see you there.